Good afternoon. Happy Friday. It's lovely to be here with you again. I can't quite believe Friday's come around again, but it seems to do that <laughs> every week. OK, so I'm just checking what you can see. And as always, I need some hand cream. OK, bear with me while I rub that in. <laughs> Oh dear, I wish I'd got shares in hand cream manufacturers. If I'd done that before the pandemic hit, I'd be a very rich woman now, I think. Are you all getting through gallons of the stuff like me? The trick is to find one that doesn't leave greasy marks on your paper crafting, isn't it? But I have, luckily, so... um, Oh, that feels better. <clears throat> so Mary's here. Hello, Mary. And Maureen is here. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you. Oh gosh, it's a funny old day today, isn't it? Uh, we've got storm, what is it? Storm Evert has hit, certainly here on the south coast. We've had gale force winds. It was about four seven yesterday and I think it was worse through the night and this morning here. Um, I live right down on the south coast. You can see the Isle of Wight from my front garden. So um, we really do get hit when there's a, a gale. Um, it seems to have calmed down a little bit. I'm kind of looking through the window, which is over there, and uh, it's not so bad, um, but it's dark. I've got my lights on, so I'll put my um, uh, uh, light. <laughs> That's the word. I'll put my proper light on in a minute when I turn the camera down, and hopefully there won't be too many shadows. Uh, but I didn't think it was going to be bright enough otherwise. Gosh, you know, almost August, and uh, we've still got the lights on in the day. Never mind. I was moaning when it was too hot last week, so uh, I need to stop that. So Mary says hello to everyone. Um, so does Maureen. Gillian is here. She says it's damp and cool in Berkshire. Excellent. I'm pleased to hear that, Gillian. Have you got the gales there? Um, Belinda's here, and she says hi to everybody too. Let me just see if I missed anything else. No, I don't think I did. Most of the time my screen moves up as the comments get added, but sometimes it seems to sit there and then all of a sudden I'll realise that there's 10 things people have said and I haven't seen any of them. OK, so that's the weather. I've dealt with the weather. Um, <laughs> what else is there to tell you? Exciting uh, happenings in my pond. Some of you will know that my husband's been re-landscaping the garden over the last year or so. Um, and he's dug a pond. It's our first ever pond, so we're very much learning uh, as we go. And it isn't finished yet, but it is there. It is lined. It is filled with rainwater. Um, uh, I'm waiting for the really exciting wildlife to, to come, like, you know, frogs and uh, newts and things like that. But actually, it's been really, really interesting watching the um, insects and other invertebrates arrive. And I don't know where they come from. I mean, how does a water beetle get into my pond? Interesting, interesting. But what I was so excited about this week, and maybe this makes me a bit of a nerd, I don't know, um, but we had we had a pond skater arrive. Now they can fly, so that kind of didn't surprise me. And then there were two, and then there were four pond skaters, and I thought, great. And I didn't know much about them. Um, I looked them up, I gather they eat dead insects in the water, so I thought, well, that's handy, save me hoovering them out. Um, and then all of a sudden I came out one day and looked at the pond and thought, what on earth is that? And on the top of the pond, there were probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 baby pond skaters. Um, they look just like the adults. They're just tiny. And I know that they, um, they have like a larval stage where they're under the water and then they uh, metamorphose and they come out and then they skate around on the top of the water like the adults. So all of a sudden we've got all these pond skaters on the pond. I'm absolutely fascinated. So uh, they're growing visibly. I mean, every day I can see that they're bigger. It's absolutely staggering. And apparently they often hibernate en masse in sheds. Now, my husband's potting shed is about, it's just over there. I don't know how far it is from the, the pond. Uh, five metres maybe, something like that from the pond. So it'd be very exciting to find we had a whole load of pond skaters hibernating in the shed ready for next year. So there we go. That's my wildlife update for today. <laughs> so Kay is here. Hello Kay, thank you for joining us this afternoon. All right, what do I need to remind you about in my Stamping Up world? Well, first of all, very exciting. The new uh, autumn and winter catalogue, the official name is the July to December mini catalogue. It's launching next month. I know next month is August. Um, it got delayed. Lots of the stuff got stuck in shipping containers all over the world. So they delayed, delayed it starting, but the catalogues were printed. So it still says July on the front. But anyway, 
come Tuesday you will be able to order things from that catalogue which is super exciting so if you're going to be booking any of my classes where you can place a minimum order to pay for your class and more on that in a minute um, then you'll be able to order from that new catalogue or indeed if you want to email me your order or telephone me your order or go to my online shop at sallybowman.stampinup.net and order there you will be able to do all those things from Tuesday so I'm super excited about that and next week I'm going to be live here on Facebook in my uh, on my business page so right here four days running so Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday at two o'clock in the afternoon I will be here to celebrate the launch of the new catalogue so on Tuesday uh, it's going to be all about the new catalogue and my favourite things with a little bit of crafting as well. On Wednesday it's going to be all about celebration, more on celebration in a second. On Thursday we're fast forwarding to Christmas. Um, I don't do very much for Christmas this early in the year or this, this far before Christmas but I, I have to do a little bit because the Christmassy stuff is just beautiful. Um, and then on Friday, my regular slot, I'm doing um, crafting for late summer and autumn. So that kind of theme. So as well as the catalogue launching on Tuesday, celebration number two starts on Tuesday. It's the first time ever we've had two sets of celebration in one year. Normally it's a three month period from January through to March, but this year we had it in January and February and then it's back again for August and September. I love celebration because I love to get crafting products that I haven't had to pay for. And actually, I think you all love it for that same reason. So from the 3rd of August until the end of September, every time you spend £45 in either the annual or the new mini catalogue, uh, you can choose an item from the celebration brochure absolutely free. There's a few things in there which are for a £90 spend, but most of what's in there is for a £45 spend. And you can have as many of those free things as you like. There's no limits on how many you can have. So if there's a pack of paper you love, you can get two, three, four, five, six packs of it um, and so on. So all of you who are on my catalogue mailing list should have got your catalogues by now and I put a celebration brochure in there as well. If you don't have a demonstrator that you work with and you'd like me to send you catalogues then just let me know and I'll happily do that. So celebration starts on Tuesday as well that's super exciting and I'll be showing you some of the celebration products because I've got a few of them early on Wednesday in my live session. So that's the new catalogue, that's celebration. Um, on Monday, which is the 2nd of August, that's the last day to order your patterned paper at 15% off. So that's a, a promotion that's been running all through July, you'll probably remember. Um, and <laughs> she goes completely blank, you know, and you've got a sentence in your, in your head and then all of a sudden it's just gone. Okay, let me get back to that. The promotion has been running for all of July. Um, it's all the packs of paper in the annual catalogue, except for the specialty packs and the colour family stacks. So there's a lot of packs of paper in there. They're all at 15% off. So you can order those in my online shop. I won't have an order going in now before that promotion ends, unfortunately, but you can certainly order them for yourself. So if you've got any paper and you've been thinking, mm, shall I get another pack? Order it with 15% off. Or if there's some you love, why not get it with a bit of money off? So that's the paper promotion. Um, I promised you a little bit about classes. So I have emailed out today to everybody who's on my class list or who has taken a class with me in the last six months uh, as a reminder to book for the first couple of classes in September. And what's so exciting is that two of those September classes are face-to-face -face classes. Yes, at last, we're gonna be able to meet together again. So if you aren't on my mailing list for classes, but you would like to actually attend face-to-face -face face classes. Um, I live in just outside Lymington on, uh, in the New Forest uh, and if you haven't had that email let me know and I'll happily send you the information out. If you want to attend my welcome back class which is being held um, on the 4th of September which is a Saturday morning or if you'd like to attend uh, my face-to-face -face monthly card class, uh, in that class you'll make six different cards. That's being held on Thursday morning, the 2nd of September. Um, or indeed, if you would like to do that same monthly card class but receive the kits by post, all those things need to be booked by a week today, which is Friday the 6th of August. 
So I'm always working about a month ahead for my classes. The reason for that is that it can take a couple of weeks if there are delays for products to get to me. I order in especially for classes. So I have to pay when I order. So I need you to pay me for your class. Then I can pay to order your stuff. Then I've got time for the stuff to arrive and for me to prepare everything and have it all ready for the class. So if you've ever wondered, why do I ask you to pay a month ahead? That's the reason why. So um, don't miss booking that. I know it seems a long way ahead September. For some reason in the summer, September seems like a really, really long way away. But actually those first few classes, um, it's really important that you book your place by a week today, next Friday. So that's the welcome back class, which is a Saturday morning. Um, the monthly card class, either in person or by post. Okay. So I think that's all the reminders that I needed to say. Um, as always, if you enjoy my sessions, do please click on the thumbs up or the heart to like or love them. And if you can share them, that really helps me. A lot of you always share and I'm so grateful because the Facebook algorithm is a mysterious thing and I never know who's going to see my posts or why they're going to get shown to somebody. But if you like and share it, then it makes it much more likely that I will get shown to other people who maybe would really enjoy the same kind of things that you do. So thank you very much for doing that. Okay, I'll just double check that nobody said anything else before I move the camera down, which I don't think they have. So bear with me just while I do that. I'm trying to separate, I've got a post-it note here to um, cover up the lens so you don't get travel sick. There we go. And I will be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so as always, there's a few different settings that I have to change. Okay, that's the settings done. I'll just alter my microphone. I also realised when I looked down at my desk that I had completely forgotten to put the notice on my craft room door. I have a notice on bright red card that goes on my craft room door when I am live online because my grown up son still lives at home and my husband's at work today but he will be back at some point and I never know whether they will remember that I'm live online on a Friday afternoon. They've been told often enough, but it's easy to forget these things. So they don't particularly want to appear live on Facebook. So, <laughs> so I put a notice on the door just to warn them. So I was trying to straighten that up and I've made an abysmal job of that. Let's just try again. And as always, I cannot remember which way to turn things to straighten them. I have to mirror image everything on my phone so that it's the right way up for you. There we go. And that's the wrong way. Okay. So let me try turning it back that way and let's see if I've got things a little bit straighter. How's that looking? Wait for my iPad to catch up. That's better. Okay, not perfect, but better. All right, so I'm going to be looking at the Expressions in Ink suite today. Um, I've got my annual catalogue here, so it's on page 96. I can't get the whole, cam uh, whole catalogue under the camera, I don't think. But um, this is where to find it. So in the suite, there is um, a set of stamps and dies, and you can get those uh, at 10% off if you buy them together using the bundle code. There is also something that Stamping Up are calling an ephemera pack, which, let me try and move my catalogue so you can see, there we go, which is here, and it's also illustrated further through the catalogue on page 141. I have a slight um, disagreement with stamping up over calling that an ephemera pack. I don't think it really is an ephemera pack because um, to me, ephemera is everyday stuff that that is useful for a short time and then gets thrown away. So things like tickets and labels and receipts and 
oh, I don't know, things like that. Bits and pieces that you might collect to use in mixed media work or journaling or scrapbooking, memory keeping. Um, so for me, that's not ephemera. But anyway, <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And then there is also a gorgeous pack of papers. They give you just a little hint of them here. And then they're shown properly on page 131. So if you were wondering about the suite, that's where it is. Let me just pop my catalogue out of the way. But I don't think there's anything that really compares with showing you things. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm just trying to make a little bit of space. So let me show you the stamps. So this is the stamp set here, artistically inked. And there are some images and there are some words in here. The first thing to say is that the words are incredibly useful words. Sorry, I'm just trying to talk to you as well as move my light. See if I can improve the reflection. I'm not sure if I have or not. Um, so we've got hello, best wishes, thanks and happy birthday. So absolutely key words. So it's brilliant for that. And they're quite a good size. This is quite a large thanks, quite a nice sized happy birthday as well. And then the actual images all look as if they have been done with either watercolour or even with alcohol inks. If you've played with alcohol inks, you'll know that they have this fantastic quality where they kind of marble and move and blend. So you've got a sort of a flower shape here, one here that's a bit like a rose, a small flower, some leaves, a group of even smaller flowers, some little dotty shapes, and then this gorgeous, um, I don't even know what to call it, a wash, a smudge, a blot. It's absolutely beautiful. So the stamps are incredible and I will be stamping with them because you can't really appreciate them till you actually see them stamped. Okay, so Mary's saying it's lovely. Have you got it, Mary? I can't remember. I ought to probably be able to remember, but I can't. And then these are your dies. So there are some dies here that coordinate with the stamps. So if I just bring back the stamps for a minute, you can cut out this flower and that flower and that flower and the leaves and the group of flowers there. So all the, the actual images, if you like, not the textural stamps, so not the dots and not the swirl. Then there are also a couple of dies which cut out shapes independent of the stamp. So you've got this one here, which is an incredibly detailed die. I'm gonna be using something cut with that in a minute. And then also this gorgeous leaf spray, which you can either use as a real statement piece or you can snip individual sections from. So Belinda agrees that it's a stunning set. Yeah, I completely concur. And given that Belinda has commented, those of you who are in my Paper Crafters group, which is a Facebook group for people who um, do my classes, um, if, you would, if you're not in that customer group, but you would like to be, please let me know and I can add you. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a Facebook group and Belinda posts quite regularly in there, which is fabulous. And she has just posted some amazing um, projects made with this same suite. So if you haven't had a chance to have a look there, do have a look after today's session and you'll get much more inspiration. Um, and if you'd like to be a part of that group, then please do. I started it um, when the pandemic started and we were all missing seeing each other at classes. And that's actually been a really lovely group over the last 18 months. People have posted their projects there and shared all kinds of things, um, both paper crafting projects and other things they've made. And it's been really inspiring for all of us as well as a lovely place to chat. So I'm happy to add you to that if you come to my classes or have done my classes online. All right, um, I'm gonna show you the ephemera pack actually. And I'm gonna save the star of the show until the end. So this is the ephemera pack. Um, I've started using mine as you can see. It comes really nicely packed, but it's actually quite difficult to show you and then get back neatly. So <laughs> let me just move that off there. Here we go, this should help. So you get, I'm hoping it will tell me on here how many sheets, I can't remember, one set. Um, lots and lots of pieces, there are one, two, three, four. You get four sheets like this 
of die cut gold pieces so you have leaves and berries and all sorts of frames here as well um, and if I just I've got a few here that I've actually um, taken out hang on that's one I've cut apart you don't want to see that let's give you a, a whole one so there's much more than I am showing you here but they are really really beautiful they're all die cut so they come across apart quite easily so this is a piece that has come out of a frame like this so you can use a lot of the negative bits and pieces as well Belinda says that she's just doing some more right now she can't get enough of the lovely paper yes I'm not surprised um, and Mary was asking a question because um, Belinda put up a really beautiful card so Mary was just checking if that was the die that she'd used and indeed it was so Gillian I can see that you have you'd like to join the Facebook group I will add you. I can't remember if you are my friend on Facebook or not. Uh, if you're not, I might have to add you as a friend, but I will certainly add you to that group. And thank you very much for asking. You'll find loads of inspiration in there. So Faye is here. Hi, Faye. It doesn't matter at all. You're not, you're not really late. It's fine because you can always watch anything you've missed on the catch up. And you're welcome whether you come every week or just occasionally. <laughs> so there's no worries there at all. okay so that's all the gold pieces as i say you've got four sheets of those there are lots and lots of frames and leaves and berries and then you also get this pack of really pretty iridescent sequins and these are always hard to show let me looking for my stamping mat which i cannot find there it is sometimes putting it on something dark it makes it easier to see so they've got green and turquoise and purple and pink on the sequins I'm hoping that that's shown up. They're self-adhesive, so you don't have to worry about glue or anything with those. Right. I'm not going to try and put all that back in the bag on camera. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. All right. And then finally, the paper. The paper is absolutely fantastic. So I will show you that. And Kay would like to be added too. Of course, Kay. Happy to add you to that group. Okay, so the paper is a specialty paper, um, which means there is something unusual about it. It's not just your regular paper. And in the case of this pack, there is gold foiling on all the sheets. The sheets are double sided and one side has foiling and one side um, ha does not have foiling. Um, as always, it's quite hard to get something that's 12 inches square under the camera, but I'm hoping I can get enough under here to show you. So this sheet has this beautiful swirled ink across it, but there is also some gold in it, which I'm hoping will show as I tilt this. And it's one of those layouts of, on the paper that Stamping Up have done quite a lot of recently, where you can obviously use it as a whole piece, you can cut it up any way you like, but it's particularly great if you cut it into four or six pieces. So if you cut it across the middle and then you cut it down, into six by six pieces or if you cut it into sort of thirds that way um, it's absolutely fantastic and I'm just going to grab a couple of bits of card to block off some of the pattern and show you what I mean meant to get this out earlier and forgot I was looking for black but I can only reach the grey but that's okay so if I block this off about halfway down in both directions there we are so you can see you get this really interesting shape here that's not quite six by six that's a bit more like by six by six so you can stamp or decorate here or if I turn it you can do the same this way round and if you decrease the size of your piece then you get a piece that's more
card front size. So it's fantastic for cutting up. So this is a really beautiful pattern. Faye, absolutely I can add you to the group. Happy to do that. Okay, so that's that side of that one. And on the other side, you've got this absolutely beautiful effect. Um, it's a bit like floating ink on, on water and it's kind of swirled in together. It's absolutely stunning. So that's the first pattern. There's this one. So on this one, you've got gold foiled leaves and gold foiled flower centers. And the flowers are the same shapes as you have in the stamped images. And the, the colors in the papers, I'll read out the official colors in just a moment, but they're, they're pinks and peaches and greens. So they're really beautiful with the gold. And then on the back, you have another one of these pieces of paper with the design through the middle. So it cuts into four or six pieces absolutely beautifully. And these are also stunning for making um, albums if you like to make books or for memory keeping and scrapbooking. They're just so beautiful. Here's another one. This one reminds me of malachite, that gorgeous bright green mineral. So you've got the deep greens, you've got a yellow green in here, and then you've also got the gold foiling. And if I turn it over, you've got the floral pattern, but this time uh, there's more white space and you've also got white centers to your flowers. So this is really crying out for me anyway, <laughs> crying out for you to stamp the centers. If I bring back the stamp set and show you here, you could stamp this image into the center or you could stamp the dots into the centers of the flowers. You could also stamp these little the flowers here into your white space gaps, either with ink or you could use Versamark and then heat emboss them in gold or any other color come to that. This one is my favorite paper. So this again has this beautiful pattern across the middle, but top and bottom, it also has the patterning. So if I just bring back my dark card and let me see if I can block off a piece that would be kind of card front sized to show you. It's not the easiest thing to get under the camera, but I will do my best. There we go. It's a little bit, little bit wide, something like that. So cut down, it's just absolutely gorgeous. You can put vellum across it and then you can still see the pattern underneath if you want to perhaps stamp on the vellum, you can stamp your words, you can stamp in the white space or just use it as a background and then add maybe flowers, something like that to the front. Just beautiful and look at that gold. And then on the back, you've got another pattern that flows through the center of the paper. Uh, this time it's in pale papaya and uh, I think it's polished pink, the pink in this. I'll read you the proper colors in a second. So Belinda is saying that the colors in the papers go well with the in color cardstock, especially polished pink, evening evergreen and pale papaya. Uh, she says she loves it. And that pink paper is her favorite too. Yeah, this one here, gorgeous paper. Okay, this is pattern number five. So this is another floral pattern in pale papaya and green. And this time you've got gold flower centers and gold speckles in the white space. And on the back, it's another absolutely beautiful kind of watercolory, inky image. Um, and this is perfect if you want to add flowers over the top, um, it would be great as a background for an underwater scene or a forest scene. So whatever you like to, to add on top, this is really, really versatile. And then finally, this one, which is a little bit different, a bit bolder. This is gold stripes, gold foil stripes on a white background. And then on the other side, We've got pale papaya with uh, that kind of inky effect again, but with a lot more white space. 
and this would also be beautiful made up into gift bags or boxes as well as used for layering and anything with gold is great for a celebration card whether it's you know for men or women Christmas birthdays whatever so that is the paper which is just so beautiful so let me know if you've got any questions on any of that or if you want to see anything again I'm just going to grab the packet and tell you which colours they are Okay, so the colours in here are Evening Evergreen, Just Jade, Magenta Madness, Mint Macaron, Pale Papaya, Pear Pizzazz, Polished Pink, Shaded Spruce and Whisper White. So you've got several greens, several pinks and Pale Papaya. They're just beautiful. all right so what have i done with them well i've done lots of things with them but i thought i would just share three now i've got four projects to share with you today so the first one focuses on the paper and actually before i, sh I actually make a project i'm just going to show you this one this was part of my last monthly card class so i've cut down one of those patterns of paper here just to give me a card front size one of those where um, I was saying you know there's white space and there's color on it so it cuts down beautifully and all I've done is stamped happy birthday and added some gold cord and some um, gild I think they're called gilded gems really simple quick card um, but absolutely beautiful I'm just going to have some tea. I can feel my throat getting very dry. That's better. Okay. So now I'm actually going to make something. So I had to use my favourite paper for this. So I've cut a piece that's not quite six inches square it's just a little bit under six inches square because I wanted to use thick white card and um, we only have it in A4 we don't have it in 12 by 12 and A4 length is not quite 12 inches so my card actually measures five and three quarter inches square so I've cut a piece of um, that beautiful pink paper I think that's five and a half let me have a quick look yes five and a half inch square of the patterned paper and I've also used the die cut piece that beautiful detailed die cut so I'm going to put one of these together for you now and I thought on the one I'm going to make I'll actually use some of the pieces in the ephemera pack as well just to make it a little bit different and show you something extra So my happy birthday is this one from the coordinating stamp set and I've got various bits here. So the, the pink I chose to use is Magenta Madness. Um, polished pink would also have worked. Both those colours feature in the papers. Um, I don't honestly think in most cases it matters which you use because the paler, more dilute pink on here is more like polished pink and the more intense pink um, is more like magenta madness. So I have my piece of paper which is slightly different to the one I used earlier simply because I've cut it down but it's just as beautiful so it doesn't matter. And the first thing I'm going to do is to wrap some ribbon around it. So I've got this beautiful um, gold shimmer ribbon just looking to see if it's called anything else it just says gold on here um, yeah shimmer ribbon so this is in the annual catalogue so I just need a piece just a little bit wider because I'm just going to wrap it round I don't have to tie a bow or anything on it Mary's saying where is the gold cord the gold cord that I used on here um, let me grab my catalogue and I'll tell you Mary So if I go to the 
page with all the ribbons and things on it, which of course I can't find now I'm flicking through. Gone too far, here we go. And it's here, so this is the annual catalogue, page 140, and it's the Simply Elegant Trim. So you get two reels, one silver and one gold, um, and it's lovely, really nice cord. So that's that's where that came from. I hope that helps you find it. Right, so I'm going to put a glue dot on the end of the ribbon, or the ends, one on each end. And I don't know if you can see this ribbon. I'm making sure I've got it up the right way. It's really, it's got a real kind of shimmery sparkle to it. It's very, very pretty. And somehow when it's put on this paper with the gold foiling, it looks even more gold. So I'm going to attach one end on the back, bring it round and across the front. I'm not sure that's quite in the middle. Let me just use my grid paper to see if I've got this in the middle. No, nowhere near. <laughs> Let's just peel that off and start again. Oh, with the centre line down the grid paper, it's really helpful to be able to get things centrally placed. That's better. Okay, so it needs to go about there. That's better. I can also use it to make sure that that goes across straight. You are very welcome, Mary. Okay, so that's my ribbon on there. Now I'm going to attach this to my card base because the whole thing will be easier to work with if it's on that nice stiff card. looking to see if I want this up one way or the other. I think I actually want it up the other way. Colour is just a little bit darker it seems to me at the what's now the bottom. There we are. And I'm just going to use my scissors to pick up a couple more glue dots and just tuck them underneath that ribbon there just to hold it down so it doesn't bounce back up. What's great about glue dots with ribbon is that it, there's nothing to soak through. This liquid glue is my go-to for pretty much everything, but um, it will soak through ribbon, which I don't want. All right, so now I have my die cut piece. Now I did this in advance because there is quite a lot of confetti bits to push out of here. So I thought rather than you watch me do that, I would do it in advance. But I've cut that from um, Magenta Madness card. Now it doesn't matter really which way round I put this. It looks lovely anyway. I might do it that way. That's a little bit different to the first one. Um, and I was enthusiastically cutting and I thought afterwards, I don't know why I didn't use the adhesive sheet on the back of this. I just didn't think about it. I should have done really. But instead, I'm just going to put lots and lots of little dots of glue on here. You can lay these lacy die cuts down on a silicon craft mat and use a piece of sponge or a sponge dauber to dab multi-purpose glue all over and that does work really well but um, I'm just going to do this for now so those dots are all pretty small because I don't want glue squishing everywhere when I press this down and I'm trying to make sure that I've got something on the tips of all the little bits okay so I'm now just going to lay that down. Then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. 
So I have Magenta Madness ink here. Would also look very nice um, gold embossed. So you could do a little bit of heat embossing here if you wanted to. I'm just going to bring my trimmer in and cut up. There we are. And I've totally forgotten to put on my gold pieces. Look, I've got them here sitting looking at me. I don't know if I can tuck them underneath or if I will have to miss them off. I'd meant to tuck some gold pieces underneath. I have a horrible feeling I've stuck this down so well I can't do that. Never mind. What I'll do is I'll just kind of lay them on. Now, obviously, I'd have tucked these underneath so they wouldn't be lying on top, which does look a bit odd. Um, but they would have provided a little hint of gold. I must remember to do that next time. That's probably enough, actually. OK, so you won't see me use the ephemera pack after all, but never mind. Instead, I'll just pop my sentiment on. So I have some dimensionals here for this. In fact, that's too long, I think. Let's just snip. Snip that down a little bit. There we go. that on here just a little bit across my die cut and then somewhere somewhere on my desk I have some gold gems maybe they're still in the bucket no I saw them earlier actually and I have a feeling I put them in the wrong thing. Let's see if I've got any more in my, my box of goodies. If not, I'll come across them in a minute and then I can add them. No, they're somewhere else. Okay, never mind. Aha, got them, there they are. Okay. Gilded gems. I can never quite remember what these are called. The sequins from the ephemera pack would be really nice on this as well, but I quite like to just echo that gold. So there's three different sizes of these. There we are. And I've just got a little strip of paper to add on the inside to make the inside pretty. And a bit of stamping and then we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna add a piece of paper here. So this is just an off cut when I was trimming the paper down for my card. This is just one of the little oddments from there. And again, I can use my grid paper to help me get this on here straight. If I line up the card with one of the lines on the grid paper and then I can line up the paper and I know it will all be straight. And then I'm just going to pop a happy birthday inside as well. So 
I'll use the same stamp. And there we are. So that is my birthday card. Both similar to each other, but different. So that was using my absolute favourite paper. I'm just going to clean off this stamp and then we'll do something with some different colours. So this is my next card. So I've used that same die cut again. I've also cut, using the same set of dies, some of the leaves um, from the die set and I've used uh, something which I think is a little bit hidden in the catalogue to cut them from which is the golden rose metallic specialty paper so let me just show you this because you may have missed it too it's in the annual catalogue on page 135 I think it's really good value it goes a long way um, you've got eight sheets in there four of rose gold and four of gold gold and they have a beautiful kind of brushed almost textured finish on them the sheets are six by six inches and you get as I say eight sheets four in each color for four pounds 75 and a little bit goes a really long way it die cuts beautifully it's very pretty um, it adds some sort of lustrous gold without being too shiny shiny and sometimes you don't want that shine from foil. Um, this is just a little bit more subtle. So I cut the leaf spray from that beautiful paper and then just snipped some of the leaves out. So of course you can use that whole spray and it's absolutely gorgeous. And couldn't you make a lovely wreath shape if you cut several of those? but you can also cut it down and just use smaller sections. The other thing I've done is um, I die cut this piece in watercolour paper and watercoloured it with different colours. When I'll just do a little section now to show you. I've got one ready done to make up the card, but just to show you. So this is my piece die cut in watercolour paper. The watercolour paper is quite heavy so I did send this through my die cutting machine several times to cut it cleanly but that was fine that wasn't too much of a trial and I'll just get my other bits and pieces out to show you what I did. So Belinda says she likes the card I just made. Um, she likes the die cut in the pink. She tried it in gold but thought it didn't stand out enough. That's interesting. Yes, I haven't tried it in the gold on that, but you may well be right. It's also lovely to play around though, isn't it? Play around with lots of different colours. So I've just got a couple of ink pads here. I've got Evening Evergreen and Daffodil Delight. Um, for watercolouring, you don't really want to pick up ink directly from the ink pad with a wet brush because all you'll do is add water in there. So there are two things you can do. You can either pop a drop of reinker in the tray and work with it like that, but be careful because that reinker is very concentrated. Or also working on the palette of the, the inside of the lid as a palette, I should say, you can squash the box. Now, for some reason, it's easier if you turn the box upside down and then squash it. So I'm just pressing my thumbs and my fingers together and then when I open it, I've pushed the ink pad onto the inside of the lid. Or 
I said two things, two ways, didn't I? There's actually three ways. <laughs> the third way is to just take a little block and press it onto your ink pad and use that as a palette. And if you're going to use a lot of one colour, oh gosh, these are new, quite new ink pads. There we go, that's stiff. They ease up as they get used. I don't know if you've found that. If you're going to use a lot of a colour, use a big block. If you're not going to use much, use a little block and then you can just wipe or wash your blocks clean. All right, I've got a water painter here. Um, I'm just going to squeeze it a little bit and get a little bit of water down through the bristles and mixed in with my ink. There we are. So I've now got a little palette of yellow ink. I've also gone all over the edge, so I always have some kitchen paper ready when I'm watercolouring. So let's bring that in, then it won't go all over my desk. All right, and then all I have to do is paint. So what shall I do? Let's paint the rows. So it's just a case of going over the top like that. Now my ink is quite wet. I mixed quite a, a lot of water with it. Um, if you're wanting to use it without diluting the colour too much, then just brush the water painter over the watercolour paper first with just water in it just to wet the paper as if you were doing true watercolouring um, and then you can carry on and add your colour. Then to clean the brush I'm just squeezing the barrel which squeezes some clean water through and then once there's no more yellow coming out of my bristles I can then change colour. So that's wet so I'm not going to work on an area that's touching it because the colours will just bleed, unless that's what I want, of course. And if I want my colours to bleed, then that's exactly what I would do. But in this case, I want some more distinct colours. So I'll come over to my evening evergreen now and just paint some leaves. And so you can see how easy it is. Uh, the very wet ink is absolutely fine on the watercolour paper. That's what this paper is designed to take. So it will take this really wet ink without buckling um, or the surface pilling or anything like that. There we go. I should probably have worked on a bit of scrap paper and then you would have more clearly been able to see the die cut. So let's move those out of the way. Let me just pop them on a little bit more kitchen paper just so you've got a white background. There we are. That's better. So that's what I did to create this. So this one is done and it's dry. You need it to be dry before you stick it down. And I'll just bring in my pieces. So I have a piece of this beautiful green patterned of paper. On the back this is the one with those flowers with the gold centres. Um, I have a piece of evening evergreen card which I've cut just to give a really narrow border and then a pear pizzazz card base um, and I'm going to make this a portrait card I think just to, to be a little bit interesting. So that's going to go on there like that. Let me first of all glue these two together. So Mary saying, lovely, what size was the card? I missed that, Mary, when you typed that in. Did you mean, you meant the large card, presumably, the square one? I will uh, double check. I think I know, but I'm going to double check that measurement for you. There we go. So this card here is five and three quarters inches square. So it's five and three quarters by 11 and a half when you cut it and then score it at five and three quarters. And then I cut the paper to five and a half inches square. Okay, and I am gonna assemble all these layers before I stick my die cut pieces on because some of them will probably extend slightly over onto the card base. And I just find it's a little bit easier this way. So Belinda saying is the one I'm doing now standard card base. Yes, it is Belinda. So this is 
eight inches by five and three quarters scored at four inches you could use it uh you could just cut a piece of a4 card in half sometimes i do that and sometimes i trim it down so it's eight instead of eight and a quarter um, but yes eight inches by five and three quarters scored at four inches right so now i'm going to work out where i'm going to put all my pieces so I think I want my flower that way round and then I've got my gold die cut pieces. This is one left over from before. So I think I'm just going to snip that single leaf and use that. And then let's have this double leaf here. I'll get hold of it to snip it there we are so there's a double leaf and let's have a couple more to use as single leaves I think there we are so I've got five leaves in all um, working with an odd number which is what I most often do because that always works a little bit better so let's just have a think about where to put these really it's just a case of playing around and deciding where they're going to look look right I was thinking it might be nice to echo that double leaf there with a couple coming up These might need a little bit of trimming. It's a little bit long for there. Maybe that will work under here. No, that needs to be a one. I think it needs to be a single one. Maybe I just need some single leaves. So let's just cut another, another single leaf off there. Yeah. And I'm going to lose one up there, so I am actually, I think, only going to use three leaves, not five. There we are. So I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these gold leaves to my coloured die cut first of all, and then stick the whole thing down. So this metallic paper might need just a minute more to grab with the glue. That bottom leaf doesn't want to um, stay attached. That's all right, let's just stick it down there. Okay. I've got glue on my fingers, can you tell? <laughs> Okay, so a little bit like before, I'm just going to just put little dots of glue all over this. If you have got a steady hand, um, you can do what I'm doing. So I'm kind of very gently squeezing the glue and then just kind of scribbling over the back. If you haven't got such a steady hand, you can just do little individual dots like that. Either one will work. There we are. I'm going to press that down, but I'm going to just wipe my fingers with a baby wipe first. I'm covered in glue. I'm 
there we are so I'm not putting any words on the front of this I'm just going to leave the front blank but I am going to add some more of these gilded gems And then for my insert, I am actually going to use one of the stamps. So I'm using this one, which is this inky swirl. I absolutely love this image. It really echoes the pattern that's on the front. And I've got Evening Evergreen ink here. And I'm just going to stamp it along the bottom of my insert. Do you see what I mean? absolutely amazingly just like an ink blot there we go and it's easy to join up or overlap because it doesn't matter if the two images overlap so that can now go inside my card and this one is done There you are. So that's two versions of essentially the same card. And I've used the dies and I've used the paper as well on that. I'm just going to clear a little space and then I'm going to bring in everything for the last card that I'm going to show you. And that one I'm doing a lot more stamping. so let me move those and then I'll show you these so Belinda says that card's pretty she's trying it in pale papaya and the orangey DSP lovely do share a photo when you have Belinda So this one is entirely a stamped card and it uses a technique that I learnt from another demonstrator friend called Ruth Trice. Um, you can see her do it and she's an absolute expert. Uh, she's got a YouTube channel and she's got a blog which is called Artful Stampin. So do have a look there. Uh, she does all kinds of versions of it. But it's a way of kind of collage stamping a big piece and then cutting it up and I just think it's magical to do. So I'm going to use some different colours this time, just make something that looks a little bit different to this. So I've got a half A4 sheet of card here, so that would be A5. You can do it with a whole A4 sheet, you can do it with a 12 by 12 sheet as well, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's imagine for a minute that this is a 12 by, uh, sorry, an A4 sheet of card. What I'm going to do is create stamping down here and then across here and down here as well, broadly. So I'm going to have down the left hand side and the bottom and across the middle and then down the middle. Uh, because I've only got a, a half A4 sheet really just for time constraints, I'm just going to stamp down the left hand side 
and a little bit top and bottom and then a bit across the middle as well so you'll see what I mean I've just put an inky smudge on that already look at that dreadful let's turn that over now I've got a whole host of ink pads here I may add something I may not use them all I'm not quite sure yet but I wanted to use some different colors to before and I tend to go for a few colors which are similar to each other and then a few contrasts so I have fresh freesia polished pink melon mambo poppy parade so those are kind of related colors in the sort of the pinks spectrum I've got a couple of greens, granny apple green and garden green. And then I've got a couple of contrasts. I've got a really dark one, early espresso, and I've got a really bright one, mango melody. So my card will be predominantly pink and red, but then it will have those other colours which just liven it up a little bit. And then I have most of the stamps here, which I've already got mounted on blocks. And I may well clean some of them and use them with a different colour part way through. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. This is one of those techniques where it's best to just do it and not overthink it. So I plan a little bit. I think about my images and uh, I think about my colours a bit, but I may change my mind part way through. Um, and at the end of the day, if I really hate what I've made, it's only a little bit of ink and card, isn't it? It doesn't really matter. Um, so so that's fine and in fact actually I think I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to stamp down there and across the middle which will be just a little bit quicker it will get me a similar result with just a little bit less stamping time right so the other thing to say is that uh, sometimes I will be inking up the stamp and using it straight from the ink pad sometimes I will be stamping off so if you're going to try this at home if you I've got grid paper that's perfect because it's really thick and you can stamp on, off onto it beautifully uh, if you don't have grid paper have some scrap paper just so you can remove some of the ink I'm going to start off with my biggest image which is this one and it's going to be more or less my focal point so I'm looking at my colors I'm not going to pick my brightest pink or red which would be poppy parade but I'm going to pick I think melon mambo which is the next brightest I'm going to keep the poppy parade for smaller images um, just to add a kind of an accent but for this I'm going to use this as the focal point so I'm focusing my stamping down there and across the middle there'll be white space here and I'm going to start roughly in the center here with my big image And I'm going to stamp this a few times and ink it each time. I'm going to pop another one down there for good measure, I think. All right. Now I may come back to that and use it with either a different colour or the same colour stamped off. But before I do that, I'm going to come in again with another fairly large image. So I'm going to use this one, which reminds me of a rose. And let's do that in fresh freesia. So I'm just going to fill in the gaps a little bit and I'm going to do some repeat stamping without re-inking. I'm going to stamp that off because where I went off the edge I've taken off some of the ink but only some of it so if I stamp it again I've got half with more ink on than the other. Um, I hope that made sense. If it didn't, ask me and I will try and explain that <laughs> a little bit better. Um, yep, so I'm going to leave that one for the minute too. And I'm just going to put that on there so I know which colour I used where. So I need to come along the middle here. And actually, I think I need... I'm going to come back with that one. I haven't done any along the middle, I think. Let's... stamp a little bit across the middle there okay we'll bring in some green so this is granny apple green 
and I'm going to use the leaf and it might be a little bit bright on its own let me just try it yeah stamped off once I think is going to be perfect so I don't worry too much if some of these images overlap and in fact I quite often I'm going to be deliberately overlapping I'm going to stamp that again without re-inking and again without re-inking so it gives me kind of different different depths so this one is garden green and I'm going to use this image so it's a darker color so I'm using a smaller image so there'll be less of that dark color I'm going to stamp off once and then just looking to see which is the stem end stamp off and so sometimes again I'm stamping um, repeatedly with the same image there we go so that's some touches of darker green on there right now I want something I think polished pink perhaps to use with this really big image so I'm going to use polished pink but stamped off maybe even twice and find a space so I can have a look so that's straight from the ink pad that's stamped off once that's stamped off twice yeah so I'm going to stamp off twice if it's too pale I'll stamp off just once and I'm going to go right across some of these previous images so I'm partly overlapping and partly going on unstamped areas And it's it's subtle a lot of the stamping is very subtle but it all adds to the total so I'm now just going over those large flower centers let me lift this up and just see if you can see some of the detail on there just wait for my iPad to catch up so I can see what you can see okay so now I think it's time for some of those really contrasting colors and then I can see if I need any more of anything else so I've got my little dotty image uh, my little flower and my little group of flowers here so I'm going to do that group of flowers in mango melody And again I often just try it on my grid paper so that's straight from the ink pad that's stamped off so I'm gonna use it I think straight from the ink pad probably okay a bit of a dud stamp there didn't have my weight pressing quite right but that's okay So again some of them are overlapping some of them are just uh, filling in some of that white space then I'm going to do that slightly larger small flower if that's not a contradiction in terms in poppy parade And again I'm just checking the brightness of it stamped off once I think let's see turn it around a little bit so I'm just going to overlap that dud stamped one there
so I'm spreading the images out a little bit I'm also bearing in mind that I'm going to cut this up let me bring in those bits of card again so when I cut this up I'm going to end up with a stamped piece like that or like that so I'm also thinking about that and of course once it's it's cut up I can always add a bit more stamping somewhere if I need to and sometimes I cut these up into much smaller pieces I'm just going to cut this up broadly in half it'll actually be trimmed down slightly because I don't need something quite as big as half um, or a quarter of a piece of A4 for my my A6 card but um but but roughly that but you can cut them down into much smaller pieces so this is early espresso so I'm just adding some little dots of texture with this and sometimes it is going on straight from the ink pad like that but then I'm just keeping on stamping and you can see that it just gets paler and paler and you can get six or eight impressions from one inking of the ink pad if you've got a really strong colour So I think I want some more red here. And actually a little bit more brown there and then I'm going to cut it up and we'll have a look at the pieces and see if I need to add anything anywhere else. my desk <laughs> I've got stamps everywhere I've got ink all over my hands but that's okay that's a sign of an afternoon well spent I think right so I'm going to cut this up across the width which will give me pieces slightly bigger than I need for a card front and then I can trim them down as needed so there we are I love the slightly unexpected nature of this and if you do a larger piece and cut it down you get even more um, surprising results it never looks the same once you've cut it up even if you've sort of had in your head um, the sort of thing that you were going for so I'm now going to trim these down just a little bit more so that they are more the right size to go on um, a card front so I've got an espresso layer to put them onto so I need these to be um, the right size to fit on there so I always look at them and think okay I need to trim this down by about half an inch so if it was very imbalanced then I would take more off one side than the other or if there was a bit I didn't really like or I'd messed up I would trim that piece off first so I'm definitely going to take some off this side so this measures ooh, about five and seven eighths and I need it to be just under five and a half so let's cut it down I'm going to take most of it off that side and then just a little bit off this side so I'm cutting it to five and three eighths 
and then I could have it that way around of course I think I like it this way around so I'm going to cut most of the excess off the top so this measures four and an eighth and I need it at three and five eighths So let's chop it there and then we'll just chop the balance off the bottom. There we are. So that's my finished piece for my card. Let me pop it on the espresso layer and you can see better I expect. There we are. And then I'll do something similar with this one but I'm going to take most off this side I think maybe all of it off that side yeah there we are oops I just dropped my trimmer So let's stick those two together. Is that the way round I stamped them or is it the other way? I think it, that's the way round I stamped them. So I've got two cards from one piece of stamping. I've had a little surprise because until you cut them up you never quite know how they're going to look. And I think that element of surprise creates something just a little bit more artful because Sometimes our planning brain gets in the way and you can end up with unexpected partial shapes and unexpected positioning when you don't plan perfectly. So yes, I planned the colours and I planned the images I was going to use and I thought a little bit about how dominant a colour was going to be and if it was going to be very dominant I either wanted it as the focal point or I wanted to use it in much smaller quantities but beyond that I didn't really plan very much so I've got two card bases here let's try them both ways round so one is Poppy Parade and one is polished pink so I'll just swap those and see if I prefer it the other way any thoughts this way round or the other way round let's move those down a little bit so you can see them better so shall I use them this way or shall I swap them I'll give you a minute to comment while I drink some more tea Thank you Marjorie, I'm glad you like them. I honestly think it's it's doing something and then cutting it up that that creates something so interesting. I am going to stamp a word on them before I finally stick everything down. I've had nobody comment on which one should go where so I think I should probably do them this way round. So I'm just going to use this thanks stamp. You know by now I send a lot of thank you cards so I quite often make thank yous rather than happy birthdays. I do make birthday cards because obviously I send birthday cards as well. Um, but I'm always after an extra thank you card. So this is early espresso ink. I love that. It's a really nice bold word. So Belinda says use them this way round. Excellent. Thank you Belinda. And leaving that white space of course gives me somewhere to stamp. Now I could stamp this partly over those flowers or down the bottom. Pop it there I think. There we are. Now 
I should say that although this stamp set is perfect for this technique and you only really need the one stamp set, you can combine your stamps to do this sort of stamping. Um, you want some bigger images and some smaller images. Natural images work brilliantly. You can incorporate feathers and little birds as well. Um, anything with like a texture stamp, so dots or um, hatched lines. Um, long trailing sort of frondy foliage or berries is lovely. Flowers are always fantastic, but you can also use um, word stamps if you've got some sort of distressed type or something like that. That will make a beautiful addition to this. Um, and just keep layering it. Layering your images is an absolute key. And using some inked straight from the ink pad and then often stamping and stamping and stamping without re-inking, as you saw me do, is what creates some real depth in this. And you can't exactly identify what you've done where very often, particularly if you come back to it later, um, but it does really add to the effect. So I'm now going to pull in a few of those bits I trimmed off and use them on my insert. So some of these have got quite a lot of white on them, but that's a nice bright one. Trim that extra bit off. So that's one insert, and let's find the other one. Hmm. Wondering about that. Yeah, I think I'm going to pop that one on. The other bits I trimmed off have all got quite a lot of white on them. And that won't make nearly so much of a contrast on my insert. I'm not going to stamp any words on here because I will want to write inside what I'm saying thank you for. There we are, that's the first one. cards from one set of stamping it's a completely flat card for posting I could add some rhinestones I could add some of those pretty little iridescent sequins but I think I'm just going to leave it as a stamped card and then if I bring in hopefully this space for the other two if I can fit them all on um, exactly the same stamps the same process different colours and it, they do look completely different. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make those. Uh, it's one of my absolute favourite things to do this. Stamp it and cut it up. And I'm going to bring in the other things that I've made this afternoon. if I can fit them on. Tuck this underneath just a little bit. There we are. So 
so all made with the expressions and ink suite if you've been on the fence about this please <laughs> come off the fence get it it's absolutely beautiful um, whether you get everything or whether you just get some of it there is so much you can do with it all right i'm just going to move my camera again and say a proper goodbye to you because we've got to the end of the session it always goes so quickly i'm always surprised at how fast it goes in fact i've been on for an hour and a half if you can believe it so i've overrun just re-situate my microphone and hopefully I've reset everything so I won't be upside down. Okay, let's see how that looks when my iPad catches up. Okay, it's quite a long delay today. It doesn't look too bad. I'm there and you, I can see you. So thank you ever so much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I've loved having you. I've loved stamping with you and chatting. Uh, I'll be back next week. Don't forget, I'm doing four sessions next week for the catalogue launch. I will be uploading them to my YouTube channel. They'll be in a special playlist for the July to December mini catalogue launch. So you'll be able to find them easily. Uh, and they'll also sit here on Facebook. So if you can't join me live every day, but you'd like to watch, then obviously please do so on a replay one way or another. But thank you so much for joining me. I've made a note, Gillian, Kay and Faye. I will add you to my paper crafters group. Um, if we're not Facebook friends already and you need to be, I think you need to be for me to add you, then um, I'll send you a message or get hold of you somehow and, uh, and we'll add you as friends and then I can add you to the group. But thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend and I will see you again soon. Bye bye.